Hey guys, it's Darwin, and today we're talking tents, freestanding versus trekking pole, the pros and cons of each, why I don't use a freestanding tent, and what the best option is for you. So yeah, I know, I know, I'm not out on the trail, I'm inside, but it's like 15 degrees outside, tons of snow, and the wind is crazy. Believe it or not, here in Arizona, it does get pretty nasty during the winter, and uh, obviously I'm dealing with it right now. But I did bring a couple plants in here, so hopefully that helps bring the outside inside a little bit. Give me a break, it's cold. All right, in the past I've talked about tents versus bivvies, tents versus hammocks, and I think we've come to the conclusion by now, I'm a tent person and it's my preferred shelter on the trail. But a debate that I see come up all the time is about freestanding tents, versus trekking pole tents and why you would use one over another. And I get questions all the time about why I always prefer a trekking pole tent over a freestanding tent. So today I figured I would give my opinion, the pros and cons of why I use one over the other. But keep in mind that like all gear, it's super subjective and it's all a personal preference and what makes you comfortable on the trail. But here's my two cents. Over the last five years, I have used a bunch of different tents, both freestanding and trekking pole, from my Big Agnes Copper Spur UL2 that Snuggles and I used out on the AT in 2015, to the Z-Pax Duplex that I used last year on the PCT, the Z-Pax Pleximid that I used this year out on the Arizona Trail, and a Big Agnes Fly Creek UL1 that Snuggles still uses today whenever we go out on trips. But you'll notice since I got off the AT, I use trekking pole tents, and I would not use a freestanding tent on another through hike and we'll go over that in a second, but first, let's go over the pros and cons of each. All right, so mainly using trekking pole tents over the last five years on the trail, I can tell you the number one pro for me is simplicity. Now, most of the trekking pole tents that I've used are very simple designs. Take the duplex, for example. It is a one-piece tent, which means that the fly, the inner with the netting, the bathtub, everything is one piece. So it all fits in this one bag. And because it uses my trekking pole that I'm already using anyways, it's super simple. Everything all attached in one place. So for me, I just throw it on the ground, stake it out, put my trekking poles in there, pull some tensions and voila, I have a home. I don't have to mess with setting up a pole system, putting in the inner, then putting on the tarp. It's very simplistic and really easy to use on the trail. And because it's all in one and it's only one piece of gear, the next pro for me is weight. Because there isn't a separate pole system and a footprint and a fly and an inner, it obviously weighs less than some of the freestanding tents on the market. Now, weight's not everything, but it is nice to keep that overall base weight low and keep me comfortable while I'm hiking. And in my case, that means I can carry more camera gear, more lenses to make, well, videos while I'm out on the trail. So that is definitely a pro for me. And then that brings me to my last pro, which is packability. Now, what do I mean by packability? Well, when I go to put things in my pack every day while I'm out on trail, I wanna take up the least amount of room as possible. Now, sure, I use small packs, but a good example is if you look at just the footprint from the Big Agnes Copper Spur, that Snuggles and I used out on the AT and compare that with the size of the duplex, a two person tent, I mean, everything is here all in one. Now, if I have a freestanding tent like the Copper Spur or the Fly Creek, I'm gonna have my separate poles that I'm gonna have to stick on the outside or strap to the bottom, along with the tent that I'm gonna have to put in my pack and the footprint that I'm gonna have to put somewhere else. So packability is always a huge pro for me just because I can't stand having extra stuff hanging off the outside of my pack, strapped to the bottom, strapped to the top, strapped to the side. I like having everything in my pack, so good packability is definitely a pro with trekking pole tents. All right, so let's talk about the cons of using a trekking pole tent. Number one is definitely gonna be condensation because most trekking pole tents out on the market are single walled. They don't get as much ventilation as a freestanding tent, so they do have condensation problems. They don't have that space between the inner and the fly to allow good airflow, 
So chances are a lot of times you're gonna wake up with a wet tent. Now there are some tents out on the market like the Aeon Li that I just recently picked up that are trying to combat that with certain vents and different styles of how they design it. But still, in my experience, most trekking pole tents, you still have that issue. And the second big con on using a trekking pole tent is the setup because it does require tension to set it up and it doesn't have any type of exoskeleton frame to it like a freestanding tent. You can't just set it up everywhere. Now I could probably debate this a little bit because I've set my tents up in some really weird, awkward places, but most of the time you do need a good piece of flat ground with plenty of area around it to be able to guide it out, to tension it, to set it up. And because it doesn't have that exoskeleton frame, in some cases, whenever it's really bad weather, super strong wind like it is right now, you do have an issue with the strength of the tent being able to hold up in the wind because it has less structure to it. All right, so I could talk a little more about trekking pole tents, but I do that quite a bit on this channel. So let's talk about freestanding tents. Now, even though tents like the Z-Pax Duplex are a super popular tent on the trail, I would say most of the hikers that I see out on my hikes are still using a freestanding tent. And I'm no exception because I did use a freestanding tent on my entire hike of the AT. And still, to this day, Snuggles uses a Big Agnes Fly Creek UL1. It, it's her tent of choice. I think the number one pro of using something like a freestanding tent is the setup. Because it has that exoskeleton structure, you can basically set it up wherever you want. You don't necessarily have to stake it out like you do with a trekking pole tent. So you can set it up on uneven ground, you can set it up on wooden platforms. If you wanted to, you could even set it up in your living room because you don't necessarily have to use stakes to get it pitched. So I would definitely say they're much more versatile than a trekking pole tent when it comes to setup because you can basically put them wherever you want. The next big pro of using a freestanding tent on the trail over a trekking pole tent would be ventilation. Now, because most freestanding tents are double walled, meaning that it has an inner mesh with a bathtub and an outer rain fly, there's a space between those two walls that allows air to circulate, flow through, therefore giving you less condensation. And because there are those two walls and you can take that outer rain fly off on a really nice clear night, you can take it off, lay in your tent, still get protection from bugs and whatnot, but you can get a 360 view, stare up at the stars, which is something that I actually miss going to a trekking pole tent. And what are some of the cons, in my opinion, of using a freestanding tent? Well, number one for me is definitely packability. Like I said earlier, with a freestanding tent, you have the actual tent, you have the pole system, and in some cases, you have a footprint. So there's multiple things to figure out where to put in your pack. So you do have some packability issues if you have a smaller, simplistic pack. Now, because there are more pieces to the tent setup with the poles and the fly and the footprint and the inner and the outer, that obviously equals number one, more weight, and it also, for me, equals more things to break in the field, more things to keep track of and things to pack up whenever you're ready to go in the morning. So why don't I personally use freestanding tents on the trail? Why have I used them in the past, but I wouldn't use them on any future hikes? Well, basically for the same reason I don't use hammock systems is simplicity. When I'm out on the trail from two to four to six months, I want the most simplistic setup I can possibly get. If I wake up to a wet tent, whenever I get to a dry part of the day, I don't have to hang the rain fly separate from the inner. I can just throw one piece of gear out and dry it. I like using the most stripped down simplistic gear I can possibly get, which is why I don't like packs that have zippers and extra pockets on them, because those are more things that can break and go wrong when I'm in the field. You know, if my tent poles break on a freestanding tent, I'm basically screwed and I can't set my tent up. But if my trekking pole breaks, I can either ask someone else that I'm hiking with if I can use their trekking pole, or I can even use a stick 
and still set it up. So overall, for me, it's just about simplicity and efficiency. Sure, I might have to take a little bit longer to find a perfect flat spot with enough room to put out all my stakes, but when I find that flat spot, I know that I can very easily and efficiently throw that tent down, put some poles in it, and I have home so I can spend more time relaxing, eating, shooting video, or doing the thing that I came out there to do, which is hike. Now, if you're someone that's still on the fence about what tent you should use, maybe you're planning your next section hike or your first through hike and trying to figure out, are you a freestanding person or a trekking pole person? My suggestion is get out on the trail and try both. Maybe you have a friend that has a trekking pole tent, you can borrow it from them, get it out on the trail and make sure that you're gonna be comfortable for four to six months and setting it up and living in it every single day. It's all about trial and error, people. You gotta figure out what works best for you. Because remember, it's all subjective and it all comes down to what makes you the most comfortable while you're out there. Now, I've rounded up some of my favorite trekking pole and freestanding tents, plus some budget options. So I'll put those links down below if you guys wanna check those out. Real quick, you guys have asked for them for the past year and I recently relaunched two t-shirts over on Bonfire. So right now, for a limited time, I have, backed by popular demand, the Embrace the Suck t-shirt and a new t-shirt design to celebrate my new website, The Outdoor Evolution. So right now, you have 12 days to put your order in. At the end of those 12 days, the orders will be over, which is on December 10th, and they'll start shipping on December 17th. So if you've been wanting a shirt, now's your chance, and you should get them in time for Christmas. I'll leave links down below to both of those shirts. But again, right now, if you're watching the video and it's the first day I've put it out, you only have 12 days. So what tent do you prefer, freestanding or trekking pole, and why? Leave me something down below and let me know your thoughts. If you found any value in this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.